If you're like me, you love running so much that it doesn't matter where you run or how far you run, whether it's a 5k up to a marathon, whether it's on any of the four T's, treadmill, track, trail or tarmac, you just love to run. And that's great because it keeps it fresh, it keeps it interesting and it stops you losing your mojo. I've lost my mojo! There's nothing worse than getting into a running rut doing the same old routes every day. But if you regularly vary the different terrains and distances that you run, you'll soon discover you need a different type of running shoe for the different types of running that you do. So today I'm going to take you through the five main types of running shoe you're likely to need and give you examples of the shoe I use in each of those categories. First up, you will need a daily trainer. This is the shoe you will arguably wear most often. It's the shoe you wear for your easy runs, your tempo sessions, treadmill running and intervals. And any runs on tarmac or path where you're not all out racing. For years, my choice of daily trainer has been these, the New Balance 1080s. These are version 11, uh, but I did have two pairs of version 10s on rotation prior to this. And that's another thing, you may find you need two or even three pairs of your daily trainer because you use them so much. And I know some people who buy in bulk. The 1080s are like wearing a pillow on your feet. The upper is a very soft material which molds to your feet. And the midsole is a very soft, cushioned, comfortable foam. It's not great to constantly pound the roads and getting out there on the trails is a great way to mix it up get yourself a dose of nature and also improve that leg and ankle strength by running on uneven and more challenging terrain. And for that, you'll need some trail shoes. Trail shoes have better grip on the sole and a more durable upper or a more durable shoe all round for the demands of running on the trails. My trail shoe of choice for a long time has been the Hoka Speed Goats. Now these are version five, but I've been running in Speedgoat since version two. You can see they are chunkier than your daily trainer. They do have much more grip on the sole and they are generally a more durable shoe. But for many, they may be overkill. You can see Hoka are very well known for their large stack height. Makes for very, very comfortable shoes over very long distances. I'm talking over a hundred miles. You can wear this shoe and still feel comfortable. It is a heavier shoe. There are lugs on the bottom for more grip and the upper is a more durable material so it can last over this tough terrain that you're gonna be running on. But as long as you find a shoe that has some more grip than your daily trainer, then you're gonna cover mostly 90% of the trails that you're going to run on. Which brings me on to the next category. You see, you're never going to find a pair of trail shoes to cover all bases. My Hoka Speed Goats will be great over rock and a little bit of wet and on dusty trails, but when it comes to mud, they're not really very good at all. So if you find yourself running in very boggy conditions, in slippy mud or wet grassy slopes, you might want to consider getting yourself a pair of trail shoes with rather deeper lugs. By the way, now's a good time. If you're finding the video interesting, useful or entertaining, please do hit the like button and consider subscribing to the channel. Let's get on with the video. These Innovate Mud Claws have a much more aggressive sole. They can cope with muddy, deep, boggy conditions much better than my Hoka's and much better than many of the general trail shoes you'll find out there. They're made by Innovate. They don't have an awful lot of cushioning, so if you like your soft cushioned shoes, these may not be for you, but they are for a specific purpose. Of course, some people will buy three, four, five different pairs of trail shoes, all for different kinds of conditions. The problem is you're likely to do one race where you get all those different conditions in one go. With the speed goats and the mud claws, I feel like I've got an option for 95% of the terrain I'm likely to encounter on my runs. 
you've ever run on a track, you might have come across track spikes. Now, I have to confess, I very rarely wear spikes. If I do a training session on the track, I'm more likely to wear my daily trainer and I very rarely do any races on a 400 meter track. But I have worn spikes at the track and also for cross country. And if you're somebody who enjoys racing with your local club at track and cross country, then you probably need to invest in a pair of track spikes. They are not the most comfortable or cushioned shoes you're ever likely to wear. Spikes are generally just racing flats, old fashioned racing flats with uh, spikes on the bottom. And you may find that you need to adopt a more forefront running form in order to take advantage of the spikes which are on the forefoot of the shoe. Now, as you might be able to see, if you take a close look at my spikes, I have worn them for both track and cross country. The difference being that you change out the spike length on the bottom. So for track, you would have a shorter spike. For cross country, you would have a longer spike. If you're serious about running fast and you want to shave every second you can off your time, then you should probably invest in a pair of carbon plated running shoes. And if you're like me, this is a shoe that is so expensive, you are only likely to wear it for races and very, very rarely for training. They are very lightweight, they are very well cushioned, and they can feel a little strange when you first put them on if you've never worn a pair of carbon plated shoes before. The current king of the crop when it comes to carbon plated super shoes are the Nike Vaporflies. These are the next percent. These are version one and version three has just been released, but I've been wearing version one for a few years now. But the latest challenger to the Vaporfly crown is the Saucony Endorphin Elite shoe. This is recently released and I am currently testing them. I'm going to test them on a half marathon this coming weekend. Will they replace my trusty Vaporflies? Well, there will be a review out of these shoes on this channel in the next couple of weeks. And if you'd like to see the video where I first put on the Saucony Endorphin Elites, then click that link right there. If you found the video interesting, entertaining or useful in some way, then please do hit the like button and consider subscribing to the channel for plenty more training videos, race recaps and product reviews. Until then, we'll see you on the start line next time. Bye bye.